Well, good morning. Good morning. I am here to thank you for your generosity supporting this facility and the many ministries that happen here on a regular basis. We want to challenge you on how we can accomplish the many programs planned for 2020. First of all, I want to thank my family and friends for all their support as I tell my story about my participation in this church. One question I could ask is how comfortable are you sitting in that pew? I think we are all pretty comfortable and that is the reason for us to be generous as we look at our funding for next year's budget. I'm not gonna get into the numbers. I'm going to tell you my 41 year history briefly, hopefully, in Mooresville and why Nancy and I are supporting this church and now why we have planned to leave a legacy after we leave this earth. We moved to Mooresville in 1978 with two beautiful daughters when I was hired to work at Mooresville Federal Savings and Loan. My first negative experience occurred during my first couple of weeks when I decided to have lunch at Biff's Bakery. A gentleman came up to me and asked if I was a new guy to Savings and Loan. I said, yes, sir. He began to tell me why I was not welcome here, since he was adamant that no growth was needed in Mooresville, and I was the last one that was needed as well. I won't mention this man's name, but he was on the town council and owned the land where Meadow Lakes and the Jackson Center are currently located. <laughs> we joined the church and was, that was located downtown shortly after we settled into the community. It was only a few short months later when I had a very positive experience when my daughter Mandy and I went to Eminence High School to attend the girls basketball sectional. Mooresville girls was pretty good that year and perhaps they may, had gone to the semi-state that year, I believe. A gentleman came up to me and asked if I was the new man at the savings and loan. I said, yes, sir. He said he would like to buy Mandy and I's tickets to the game. That man was Sonny Perry. Several men influenced me at our church downtown, like Richard Kellum, Aldridge Harvey, Chelsea Thompson, just to name a few. We managed to work our way through into the interpreter Sunday school class where we learned a great deal about the Bible. In the late 80s, I was asked to join a group of church members to walk this parcel of land. Since we were landlocked downtown with very little parking, along with utilizing a two-story and maybe you call it a three-story with the basement, without an elevator, it was a challenge to think about growing the church. At that point, I was asked to serve on the building committee with several other members that are still attend our church. This was a very exciting time in the life of our church, but a very challenging time as well. The decision was made to buy this parcel of land, which contained about 50 acres. South Indiana Conference suggested that we retain 12 acres for the new church, which would hopefully be enough for future growth of the facility. So we paired off the unneeded extra acreage, which was sold to Sonny Perry, who has managed over the years to build some nice empty nester and single family type housing. After two, three year fund drives, we managed to move forward with the building this facility thanks to the determination and leadership of Dr. Robert Holden. We moved in this facility in 1995 and we'll be able to celebrate 25 years here in 2020. Of course, life changed for us all on 9-11 to 2001. Shortly thereafter, a lady by the name of Jackie Ryman talked about taking a small group, which turned out to be 13 people that included Nancy and I, to go to the Henderson Settlement in Franks, Kentucky to work on a local project there. Since the dorm had not been built, we had to stay in the small house next to the church that had two and a half baths. It was a little difficult to manage with 13 folks, but we had fun waiting our turn to use the bathroom. Our project was to install skirting on a single wide mobile home that, was, that housed two adults and two children. Without running water in the trailer, they had several milk jugs and a stream coming out of the mountains. Pretty trying times for them. The trailer needed windows, but our skill level was challenged just to install skirting on the trailer. It rained every day, so that road that we traveled became a mud bog. 
Jackie had borrowed a Chevy Suburban from a friend, and by the end of the week, she had managed to lay it on its side in the ditch next to the mobile home. So we had to have a wrecker come from Pineville to upright the SUV and pull it out to drier ground. We bonded that week. God lifted me up during that Thursday evening communion service. That week, I left with lasting memory in my life that I still remember to this day. After returning home from our week at Henderson, we started recruiting others to go the next year and the momentum really took off. And now about 20 years later, our group is still intact. Serving on the Wills and Endowment Committee has instilled for Nancy and I to leave a legacy when we were gone. We were very proud that we had a daughter get married here and a grandson that received his Eagle Scout Award here. I challenge you to think about how we can help sustain this facility along with the many ministries, including our preschool program for the future. Let's help each other to be generous during this month's stewardship program. Thank you very much.